Buongiorno, buonasera, benvenuti amici, welcome my friends, my name is Vincenzo and welcome to my channel, Fountain Pen Therapy. Once again, I was sipping on my espresso, enjoying my day, doing a couple of reviews, editing and um, just enjoying fountain pen writing in general and enjoying my collection and um, decided that uh, to review a most recent pen that Majon has put out and that I uh, quickly uh, snapped up and I thought I'd share some thoughts about this pen with you uh, in the hope of uh, uh, entertaining you and perhaps providing you with some additional information to see whether or not you would be interested in pro procuring it for your own collection. The pen in question is this uh, Majon V1, um, what I would call the test tube pen if you will i don't know if it's a first but certainly i haven't seen anything like it or perhaps i did but let's get into my detailed review we'll go to my overhead camera and um, i will give you my thoughts so stay tuned welcome back so once again here is the pen um, i think it is just taking a first look at it i think it's gorgeous um I got to tell you, uh, you know, Majon, Jin Hao, As Vine. Um, I know there's a lot of criticism out there. Look, I, I enjoy a nice Leonardo Officina Italiana pen or, a, you know, a beautiful Sailor or even a Mont Blanc. Don't get me wrong, but those pens are not always, uh, you know, affordable. And, and um, you know, sometimes you have to look elsewhere. To try to find you know a nice product at a very very reasonable price if not at a very low price that can procure some enjoyment for you and after all this is fountain pen therapy after all what it means is will i enjoy having this pen in my hands and writing something on paper or my thoughts on paper that's really uh, that's really what it's all about and when you look at this pen, I think it does that trick. Now, is it perfect? Far from it. Um, is this an original design or has it been copied? You know, the last time I ventured to say that Jinhao 9019 was to me an original design, I've got, I got blasted by a series of, of, of comments saying, no, it's a, it's a, limitation of the pilot emperor i totally disagree with that um, in fact many of my viewers also express the same disagreement i thought that it had many differences um, but having said this look i have not seen any other pen that has this design except for one and what design am i talking about it's this test tube design in other words having such a great or, or such a big cap i believe i saw one and i just can't for the life of me um, remember where but even then it was made out of resin I, I distinctly remember that it did not have this transparent demo look it certainly did not have this pretty gold trimming right here at this end so I'm going to venture once again, and you know what? At best, I'm going to get some comments, which are, which is great. This is what it's all about. If I can engage or if I can get, you know, start a debate on something, I think I've, I've accomplished. It means my viewers are looking. It means my viewers are attentive. My viewers are knowledgeable. And, and that's all I can ask for. So bear with me. I think I'm going to stick with it and say this is not déjà vu. Uh, not for me it isn't um, I think it's it, it fairly original is that clip original no I've seen it before and we'll see some comparisons uh, before but it's probably very original to match on okay uh, so let's look at this out the outside of this pen well first of all very nice transparent thick finial on the top what I think really makes this pen is this bottom finial and the bottom finial has inscribed on just gorgeous gold Majon. So the branding is there. Very, very nice. You can see this, this 
gold trimming here, but it's really in the interior uh, because the outside is essentially uh, what, what I called a test tube. Okay, uh, and then the pen comes out, and um, the pen, uh, that's the interior. So that's, that's it for the exterior, really. There's not much more to, to say other than to say that it looks like a big test tube. Um, will this pen effectively seal and maintain the wet nature of the... Probably, I would venture to say it's probably guaranteed because I don't see any, any slippage there. But one will see in, you know, in time. Um, so when we open this up, yes, it's a vacuum. It's a vacuum filler. Uh, and you can see the mechanism. By the way, this pen comes apart completely. I don't want to waste time here to demonstrate that for you. But I used the Twisby wrench um, to, to unloosen this. And it comes right out. Uh, and it cleans very nicely. So uh, just to say, don't hesitate. It, it does work. Um, now, so that's the vacuum fill. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is that it does have an O-ring, which is always, which is a nice touch. Um, it is greased up. I greased it up a little more. And it does have an O-ring right there. Uh, so uh, the sealing is even is even better if you will okay so that's put it nice and tight now here's where i think this pen i'm not going to say fails but uh in my mind it's one setback for me anyway and it's that small size number five nib why I don't, I don't know why any pen maker would use a size 5 nib. F for me personally, um, is beyond me. But on the other hand, I, I see that many of my viewers, and in fact, many, many YouTubers, um, like that thin, small, fine, and extra fine nib. Um, and, you know, especially if we're going to get into some of the Chinese or Japanese writing, that may explain why these small nibs are very attractive for me uh, i enjoy a nice big juicy number six and even a number eight stub so when you give me a five size five extra fine fine and, and i the verdict's still out on this i'm not sure if this is a fine or a medium um i think it starts out as to be an extra fine fine and I think it was 0 0.3, 0 0.5, if I'm not mistaken, on the specs. But I I did some fine tuning on this nib. I I uh, largened the the tines, and uh, you know did some smoothing. And at this point, you'll see from my um, from a writing sample, I think it probably became a medium, which is fine with me, frankly. I've opened it up. Uh, the floodgates are there. It's now. I think an acceptable uh, writing pen. Otherwise, before it was scratchy, uh, the flow was not constant, um, and it wasn't just thin. It, it was a bad nib. So uh, I think that um, I, I rectified that. So that's the inside of this pen. Now, let's. Um, I would like to do a size comparison and. In doing the size comparison, what I propose is that we compare it to other Magon uh, demo pens, if you will. And at the same time, it'll give you an idea of the size of this pen. Um, so we'll put it right there. Here we go. Uh, let me just uh, yeah, step back a little bit. Now, um, this is the Magon C1, which, by the way, has turned out to be a, just a great pen for me. Um, this pen has, 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 has seen many, many days, uh, and I keep filling it, and look how much ink can go in there. So again, I really like this pen. Um, and um, you'll see there's some slippage in there, and that's very rare. What happened uh, is that I put this pen in my pen holder and it took a trip and went on vacation over overseas and the airplane the flight 
uh, did its job. Okay, so it wasn't a good idea to put this in my uh, in my series of pens that I brought with me when I went to Europe. But that explains why. Otherwise, this pen is almost uh, it's ever, it's ever it never. There's no slippage there. There's no leakage. It's it's just almost perfect. So that's the C1. This is the Majon T2. This is the new Majon. Um, uh, C4, I believe, and that's where uh, the familiar uh, the familiar clip comes into play. Uh, again, this pen, much like this one, uh, very very nice. The difference, of course, is that it does have a size, a number six nib, and that nib is really juicy. That Majon nib, I've got to tell you, it's a medium, uh, unlike one of my recent. Uh, I think it came in the M400. Uh, the nib was a disaster, but this one, uh, right out of the box, was was very pleasant. Uh, and, you know, this is a nice demo, by the way, uh, demo pen. And then I have, this is an older one. Uh, this is the Bajon S5, I believe. Now, this S5, by the way, does have a SAS 5 nib. But I don't know, this was an original Moonman pen, okay? So this was not a Majon. And that nib for a size 5 was fabulous. Still is. Um, I cleaned it up before this review, but um, I've been writing with it, even though it's a small pen. And as you know, I don't like small pens. I really enjoy this pen, and I enjoy it because that nib writes like a stub uh, or, uh, you know, a fine cursive, if you will. Uh, or I, I should say a fine italic. So very nice, very nice. Uh, again, fairly original. So that's the C4. And this one here is the Majon M2. So here again, this pen um, has seen its days and it's got a small nib, but it's fairly good. But, you know, we got to live with that small number five nib given the size of this pen. Um, given the size that this pen has they've could have just maybe lengthened a little bit the the spacing there so that a size six nib it could could fit i'm not sure that i can fit a six in there because it's a very fairly uh, thin opening there so i think i'm stuck with a five but nothing prevents me from putting a, for example a beautiful edison 1.4 number five uh, stub in there and maybe one day i will Okay, so that's that's the size comparison. And what I propose next is that we uh, proceed with a writing sample. Let's just see what this uh, gorgeous gold-trimmed Majon has to offer. Stay tuned. Okay, so we're back for the writing sample. Uh, first and foremost, let's look at the ink that we'll be using today. I thought that this uh, Jacques Arbin Ambre de Baltique, um, nice yellowish ink, yellow gold ink, I think will, f will go very nicely with this pen. Um, now, you know, as is the case with any uh, yellow gold ink, uh, it's not blue, it's not black, it's not dark red, it's not dark green, it's not dark purple. So you've got to be very careful to evaluate the writing performance of a nib uh, with such a light ink, uh, but nonetheless, as I've said uh, to date, uh, that that nib was awful uh, out of the box. I think we've done some work, you know, uh, we've done some work on it, and uh, we hope uh, that it has been successful. So uh, we'll take it to the next step. As far as the journal is concerned, is a Tomoe River Notebook Wonderland 222 purchased on Etsy. I will leave all the details down in the description of my video so you can have the necessary link should you be interested in looking into this particular notebook. So without any further ado, let's let's go to the writing sample. Let me focus in with my camera. Now it has been a while since I've used this pen, so if it a heart starts, you will forgive it. it wouldn't be its fault. But, you know, given the test tube, I would not be surprised. I think that, um, you know, that test tube should keep it pretty wet. So let's hope for the best. So here we go. 
Okay, so let's proceed. So this is the Magon V1. It is a demo style pen. The nib is a Magon uh, number five. And, you know, I, I think I'm not wrong to say that this way, it's somewhere in between F and medium. And this maybe partly explains my uh, bias against this nib, but I've got to tell you, take a look at how this uh, Jacobin ink is performing. It's performing fairly well. So I think that at the end of the day, I did a pretty good job in fine tuning this nib. So um, that's the nib. The ink is Jacques Herbin Ambre de Baltique and I mean it is fairly wet now okay it's coming down really nice and I I really like this ink especially it matches perfectly I say with the with the gold trimmings of this pen so that's very nice in terms of its consistency, it is now fairly constant. I think that we've managed to, you know, it is a little, still a little scratchy, but, uh, and I can still work on that. But I, I think that for a fine to medium size nib, I think that this is uh, working out really, really well. Um, you know, it, it follows. I'm not having any issues here whatsoever. So I would say that this nib is now as smooth as it'll ever be. It is constant. And it is wet. And I think now we're getting it more in my bias for, you know, a wider nib, uh, such as a bold or, or even better, a stub. And um, so it wouldn't be fair to, 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 uh, to, you know, to criticize this nib just because I don't like fine or medium nibs. Okay, so in terms of my rating, of this pen, the design, I mean, look, folks, you know, I have not been able to find another pen with a similar design. I've seen another one. It's an acrylic pen that has this kind of deep test tube, and I just can't recall where I saw it. So I can't say to you that I, I've never seen it, but this demonstrator test tube style with this big knob at the end, I've got to tell you, uh, it's pretty unique. So if Magon has copied somebody, please let me know. I mean, the last time I made any statements, I got a barrage of comments saying that uh, I was wrong and then a barrage of comments saying that I was right. And, and, and if I can stimulate some debate, all the better. But, but let's put it through. I think it's safe to say that I haven't seen too many, uh, you know, uh, of this style. So regardless, I, I think I'm going to have to give it for the design. I'm going to have to give it a big 9.4. As far as the build quality is concerned, once again, I've not been able to find anything significantly, you know, wrong with this pen. I think it's um, built fairly nicely, uh, and um, it's got some very nice characteristics. So for build, I'm going to give it a, a 9.4 as well. Um, now, as far as the nib is concerned, just because it came out of the box scratchy and not performing very well, I cannot give it more than seven. But I'm giving it seven just because it's salvageable and I have managed to salvage it. In terms of value, 
I don't know what these pens are now going for. I think the last time I checked, they were about 45 anywhere between 45 and $50 Canadian. Um, so it's not the greatest value for a Majon pen, let's put it this way. Um, you would have expected it to be a little bit less, uh, but so I would give it uh, an 8.5 in terms of value. Is it a go-to pen? Uh, not for me. Uh, just because of the nib so um, you know just this is my own personal um, you know rating uh, so I would not give it more than an eight in terms of a go-to pen uh, I, I just I think I would get fed up with this small nib eventually uh, but that's again uh, I don't want my personal bias for small size nibs to influence the performance of this nib as it now stands. I mean, I look at this gold writing. It's just, um, it is fairly nice, okay? Uh, so with all due respect, some people might say, look, I like a fine nib. And for those of you who enjoy and, ra and, and rave about uh, and crave about fine nibs, uh, this is very nice. And it's, in fact, a gusher for a fine to medium-sized nib. There you go. So that's my review. I hope you enjoyed it. I th still think that this pen is worth the purchase. Take a look at it. It's very nice. Uh, enjoy it. Like I said, you know, all of this for me is fountain pen, fountain pen, sorry, fountain pen therapy. So enjoy it and uh, keep well. Thank you.